In the last video, I wrote the code to bring 16 potentiometer inputs into Arduino through multiplexers, which was honestly a little complicated. I want to use these sensors in a machine learning enhanced sequencer, but I'm still relatively fresh to coding, so I thought it would be a good idea to do my first programming project in Max. Max is a visual programming language that is a bit simpler and faster to get your head around for prototyping. The equivalent coding in Arduino would be significantly more time consuming to learn and write from scratch. Max also has some possibilities to link into Ableton Live, which I might look into in the future. However, the sequencer isn't going to be as much of a standalone device as it could be, as it needs to be connected to a computer running the Max patch and reading the inputs. The device will also run without the physical hardware though, so I may be able to provide a downloadable version once it's finished. And one important note is that opening the serial monitor in Arduino before or while using Max means that Max can't read the data, as only one program can use the COM port at a time. This patch is really heavily based on a programming for people tutorial that I've also linked in the description, so check that out as well. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is find the serial data coming in from the Arduino. I can use something aptly named a serial object to do that, so I've double clicked to make a new object and just type serial. Importantly, I need to figure out which port the Arduino is connected to, so if I click M and make a message box, I can just try print into that. And if I connect this message to the serial lock the patch and click it, this list of the available ports comes up. Um, my Arduino is on the USB modem, so we know we need port C. So what I'm going to do here, click this open, port C, and the um, valid value we used in Arduino, which was 9600. And we're now linked up to the same serial port I sent data from in the last video. If I send this to a print raw object repeatedly, so I'm going to make a metro object, a metronome, and a toggle, so I can press T to make a toggle, which is basically a button that just stays on all the time. Click the metronome in here, lock the patch, and there we go, <laughs> it's got too many lines. But yeah, this is all the data coming in from the Arduino. So if I just pause the scrolling, we can see this is a list of numbers. I'm going to turn this off now, actually, really fast. So we've connected these up and we can see what's coming in from the Arduino over here. Um, there's a lot of 32s in this list, for example, which represent zeros. So the main issue here is that it's being sent out in this ASCII format, which is basically a system where each character is converted into a string of at least seven binary numbers, giving 128 options to represent written characters upper and lower case, punctuation, or in this case, numbers. The Arduino sends it off in UTF-8 format, which is actually 8-bit, not 7-bit, so it's even more than 128. There's an excellent computer file video about this, I'll link in the description, as it does get a little bit more involved than that. But yeah, ASCII isn't the format that Max is necessarily expecting to work with. So what we need to do is turn this ASCII list into 16 numbers that I can use in the sequencer I want to build, or you can use in whatever project you're working on. So one useful string to remember is 1310, which you can actually see here, which represents a carriage return. In the last video, I asked Arduino to output carriage returns after all 16 inputs had been read. We can get rid of this print raw object for now, because that's gonna be annoying over there. And what we wanna do is use a cell object with the arguments 1310. So that's gonna essentially split the list whenever it sees 1310 or a carriage return. I'm going to plumb the output of the serial object to the hot input of the cell object. So at the bottom of the object here, the left outputs a bang when it reads 1310, and the right outputs any data that doesn't match 1310. So combining these outputs together into a group object starts to get us closer to the format we want. So there are a lot of ZL objects in Max, but I'm making a ZL group object here with an argument of 1,000. This is super high just to ensure it will always encompass the entire list unless there's a, a massive error. I'm going to plumb both sides of the cell object into the hot input of the ZL group here so that it's receiving both the list data and also the bang message each time a carriage return is read. If I put a message box here, that's M for message box. It's going to be a long message. <laughs> Let me collect the cold input to this output. Turn this on and you'll see that list that we saw in the serial. 
So this is the ASCII list. So how am I going to get this information into the numbers that we need to work with? There's actually an I2A object or integer to ASCII built into Max. According to documentation, it converts a stream or list of up to 256 integers into a symbol. It recognizes integers into its left input in UTF-8 ASCII format, just like the left output of this ZL group object, translates them into the correct characters and outputs them as a symbol. If I attach a message box here, you can see we finally have our potentiometer values but um, they're between quotes, which is the sign of them being a symbol, and we need to split that into separate integers. Uh, the object for this has a fairly handy name, it's just from symbol. So uh, we want to connect this up to here. From symbol reads the symbol and converts it into integers, by default using the space as the separator. That's why I decided to use a space between each number in the Arduino code. So if I put a message box from this one, I've finally got a list of 16 integers. The final bit of coding here is to unjoin this list into variables I can use to control my sequencer or whatever project. Uh, neatly enough, I can use an unjoin object uh, with an argument of 16 because 16 inputs. If I then connect a number box to each output, which is I on the keyboard, I'm going to need three, four, five, eight, eight, eight. wait, down. we can start to see that visual representation of the potentiometer rows here on screen. So my potentiometers are coming in in a slightly strange order because of the way the looping works in the Arduino code. So we've got step one, A pots, step two, B pots. Uh, etc etc so that's why I'm ordering these so specifically oh I haven't plugged this in up here it'll help show what I'm doing I think it's down. A pots and B pots cool so if I move the potentiometers around a bit we're getting a nice visual representation of the numbers they're a little noisy mainly on the A parts, which is something I'm going to have to troubleshoot. It could either be something to do with the wiring or the way the multiplexers bring in the data. If anyone has any ideas, I'd be more than happy to read them. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably about it for this video. So I'm not sure what I'm going to upload next, but I'll definitely be doing a build video for this machine learning sequencer I'm designing. Uh, right now its working title is the Markov Sequencer, as I'll probably be using Markov chains, but I need to delve into that now. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for a more fun synthy video with the beep boops and the etc's, and um, thanks for watching this whole video!